Hello there, pre-meticulants. Welcome to Educate. Let us talk about geomorphology, particularly the topography associated with horizontal strata. So first of all, what is topography? Basically, topography is just the relief or the shape of the land. If the land looks like this, that is topography. If the land looks flat, that is topography. It's all about the build of the area and how the land looks like in general. And then when we're talking about the strata, we are talking about the layer of rocks. It's just layer of rocks. So whenever we're talking about topography associated with horizontal strata, we just want to see the landforms or the shape of the land when we have got horizontally layered rocks. So where does it start? It starts here when we have got lava that is erupting from underground. This is known as lava. Basically, it's just a volcano. It is, the, it is actually coming from molten magma that is found deep down under the Earth's surface. So when a volcano erupts in this case, the lava or this, this uh, fire liquid, the one that is actually um, the, molten, uh, the molten magma, the one that is erupting, it will actually solidify. It will actually become solid and it actually forms a mountainous-like shape. And we say this is known as a basaltic plateau. So this is known as a basaltic plateau, which just results as a, full, as a result of the solidification of this lava. So this liquid-like type of thing here, this liquid-like type of thing that you are seeing erupting from the ground, it will eventually be exposed to the air and it will solidify or it will become solid or is a cleaner if you want to use Zulu. But basically it's going to be rigid and it's going to form a mountainous-like shape. So this is known as a basaltic plateau. So a basaltic plateau, to write it in words, we say that lava pours out through the cracks from the ground. So basically for the lava to actually come out and erupt here from the ground, it is actually moving or it's pouring out through the cracks of the ground. So basically the ground has got smaller cracks and those cracks allow the lava to erupt from under the ground. And then over millions of years, there will be continuous eruption of lava and then it will eventually flood out the landscape. So as this lava is pouring out here from the ground, it will eventually fill out the entire place. And when it fills out the entire place, this lava will solidify or the lava will become a solid, basically, because you can see that the lava here, it looks like it's liquid, this thing that looks like fire. It's actually a liquid. It's a molten, molten magma, actually. So it actually solidifies. It becomes a thicker or it becomes a, a rigid and then it forms thick layers of basaltic rock. So basically, we say that basaltic rock it is uh, formed by this erupting lava, and then this basaltic rock um, will lay horizontally, of course. And when it lays horizontally, this will form a basaltic plateau with uniform resistance to erosion. So basically, a basaltic plateau it is formed due to lava that erupts from under the Earth's surface or underground. So this uh, this basaltic plateau has got uniform resistance to erosion meaning that whenever there, there are some agents which want to wash away the type of rock it is uniformly resistant to that erosion it's able to resist erosion in all all parts of it are all able to resist er erosion in an equal manner in a sense so that's basically where we start we start with the basaltic plateau Okay, we start from the lava that is pouring out from the ground or that is erupting from the ground, then it becomes solid or it solidifies and then it forms a thick layers of basaltic rock and they lie horizontally and then this will lead to a basaltic plateau. So remember this is all about the shapes of the land or the topography or the relief of the land which is associated with horizontally laying rocks. That's why we say here the basaltic rock lies horizontally. So now the plateau actually becomes a canyon so a plateau can become a canyon so how is that look at this this is a plateau and it's known as colorado plateau so this colorado plateau is basically um we can see that this is just a layer of rock a big space of basaltic rock that is filling out the land so this is actually the the colorado plateau so now look at this this is now known as a canyon so what do you see as the difference between the first and the second image? You can see that at this first image, you have got just layers of rock, okay? You have got just layers of rock, that is known as a plateau. It's just a, a huge piece of rock um, which is forming from lava, right? So this one is a Colorado plateau, that's the name of the plateau. 
but now you can see here at the canyon we have got a river that is in between the plateau so in a basic sense for us to form a canyon from a plateau what basically happened the river actually cuts down into the what into the plateau so in a sense this river here the river will actually cut down into the lower layers of the plateau so the river actually erodes we say it is eroding remember that water has got a an ability to just wash away things so in this particular sense the water from the river here it is cutting down vertically on this a uh, plateau to make it a canyon so this is known as colorado plateau but when it is like this is now known as a canyon so in a basic sense a canyon is just a plateau that has been eroded by a river so to explain the formation of a canyon landscape you have to say that this is your grand canyon okay this is this river is known as colorado river this is colorado river it is the one that actually erodes colorado plateau to make it the grand canyon so this is colorado river it's just an example of a plateau so now the canyons they form on rocks with varying resistance to erosion so i might have told you that the basaltic um the basaltic plateau has got uniform resistance or the resistance to erosion it is the same at all points but in a basic sense a plateau becomes a canyon um basically the canyons form on the rocks with varying resistance to erosion meaning that some of the layers of the rock are less resistance to erosion they are easily washed away some of them are more resistant to erosion they are not easy to wash away so now basically this is the first point now you mentioned that the rivers erode vertically into the land and they form deep valleys so basically the river like here in this case you see that we had just a colorado plateau but because we have a river that is eroding down a river that is flowing washing away all this part of the rock that is eroding downwards or that is eroding vertically they erode the plateau vertically so basically the rivers erode vertically and they will form deep valleys you can see that a uh, this valley is very deep okay so basically they form deep valleys because they're eroding downwards they're actually cutting deep down into the ground so the rivers as they erode they cut deep down into the ground and we end up forming a uh, deep valleys basically the valleys we are talking about the bottom parts of the mountain so here these bottom parts of the mountains these bottom parts of the mountains they're known as valleys so these valleys are going to be very deep because the rivers are eroding vertically or they're eroding downwards they're actually uh, washing away the ground and they are cutting deep into the ground so basically here if we look at our um, at our um, at our at our landscape our canyon landscape here on top we'll just pretend that the top layers are more resistant so they will form cliffs we say they're known as cliffs and those cliffs are very steep and then the less resistant layers the one that are found at the bottom at the bottom of them at the bottom of the mountain those ones are less resistant and they will form gentle slopes we are still going to do slope elements later on but just to just so you know that at the top layers they are more resistant to erosion and then those top layers that are more resistant to erosion when they are eroded they actually form steep cliffs they are very steep but the bottom layers the ones that are found here at the bottom of the mountains or that are found at the valleys here they form gentle slopes so this is how basically the canyons develop so the canyons basically develop from the plateaus so in a sense here we start with lava the lava solidifies to form a plateau then the plateau is eroded by the river vertical erosion of course and then due to that vertical erosion we end up forming the canyons whereby more resistant layers will form steep cliffs when eroded and less resistant layers will form some gentle slopes i'm sure you know the difference between gentle and steep so now canyons are important uh, because um, they've got several functions we can build dams on canyons so you can see that the valleys have got a lot of water and then um, the rivers actually cut deep so we can actually build dams on canyons or we can build dams in canyons to generate hydroelectricity remember that we can generate uh, electricity basically hydroelectricity it is the one that is generated from the power of the water so basically um if we build a dam here on a canyon for example this grand canyon if we were to build a dam there we'll be able to generate electricity using water that is known as hydroelectricity 
it is the one that is um, generated from water so that's an economic advantage whenever they say what is the advantage of having canyon landscapes the advantage of having canyon landscape is that you can be able to build dams and those dams since they are rivers the rivers are deep so you can be able to build dams and those dams can be used to generate hydroelectricity because the water flows fast with the force so we can create electricity from that and then the other thing is that uh, the canyons have got beautiful scenery or they've got aesthetic beauty when you say that the scenery of canyon is beautiful simply you can see that here yeah, this grand canyon is a tourist attraction many people who are interested in touring and looking at such great places they will actually be happy to go to some place like the grand canyon and they will attract tourists and this is an economic advantage because the more uh, tourists come and they take pictures and they tour around this place and um, it actually benefits the economy okay it benefits the economy of that country just like this is just like a national park like your Kruger national parks and all of those parks that you can visit they help to generate econ um they actually help to generate money for the country so this beautiful scenery when you say beautiful scenery you're just talking about how beautiful the place is or they can say it is aesthetically pleasing they can say that uh, canyons are aesthetically beautiful or they can say they are aesthetically pleasing this just simply means that they look beautiful to the eyes of a human being so basically they will attract tourists so now these are the disadvantages of canyons or um, these are the limitations of canyons agriculture cannot be easily done uh, on canyons okay agriculture in general okay most of the times are talking about the the, the the crop up agriculture so the agriculture cannot be done easily due to the dry plateaus so the plateaus are dry so you can see that here we don't have any trees and these canyons they basically form on places that do not have trees okay there is low rainfall there so basically we can say that here agriculture cannot be done easily because basically the place is dry when the place is dry you cannot plant any crops okay even if you were to bring livestock here it is very difficult to even feed the livestock because where, where, where is the livestock gonna eat grass there's no grass here so it's basically a dry place so agriculture cannot be easily done due to the dry plateaus and then the rivers are also too deep to access water for irrigation let's just say for example you want to do crop farming maybe you want to um, plant some crops or maybe you want to plant some maize meal or what you cannot do that because a, in a basic sense you can see that it is dry number one so if you try to attempt to, to get water from the rivers the rivers are too deep so how would you actually be able to climb down the mountain you are climbing down the mountain so that you can access water uh, at the bottom of the river since we have said that the valleys are deep due to vertical erosion or due to downward erosion it is not easy for you to be able to get to access water for irrigation or to access water for watering your plants so in a sense the canyons they've got rivers that are too deep or valleys that are too deep you can say valleys or rivers still the same context so in this way the rivers are too deep to access water for irrigation and also the steep slopes here they act as barriers for building transport roads so as we've already said that uh, the more resistant a uh, rock they will form steep cliffs so this is very steep you can see that if you were to stand here you would easily fall down because the gradient is steep so when i'm talking about steepness we're just um, asking ourselves would you fall if you were to stand on that place if it is gentle you wouldn't fall if it is steep you would fall so in a sense here you can see that there are loads of steep slope there are loads of what of steep slopes on canyon landscapes so since there are loads of steep slopes on can canyon landscape it will be easy for you to fall here so basically if you want to build let's just assume that you want to build a road here and you want to maybe build a transport route or maybe you want to do some production using this land it would be so difficult you can see that there are no roads around the grand canyon it is basically because a, a, the, the, this steep slope acts as a barrier for us to build roads we cannot actually build roads due to these steep slopes the roads are just going to call, fall off and then eventually they won't be able to work properly so these these are the things that you can look at canyons but just to revise remember everything starts here at lava 
we have got lava or we have got a volcano that is erupting from deep underground they can say it is known as molten magma it is still the same thing and then this volcano will solidify it will solidify or it will become a thicker and it will form what you call a basaltic plateau so the plateau is just a piece of huge land a huge rock it is very thick it's just a at a piece of thick rock and then now you explain how basaltic plateau forms and then the next thing this basaltic plateau is eroded by a river so the river cuts down the river erodes downwards or it erodes vertically on the what on the on the plateau and then when the river erodes successfully and enters the entire plateau we say it is known as a canyon landscape so a canyon is basically a plateau that has been vertically eroded by a river vertically eroded by what by a river so a canyon just comes from a plateau so we started the plateau we go to the canyon so now you also explain how the canyon forms due to this a uh, downward erosion you also proceed and explain also the importance of canyons that's a um, that's usually asked in the eight marks paragraphs question and then you also need to apply the, the, the disadvantages of Kenyan landscape. So thank you ladies and gentlemen for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends to stay tuned.